Well, hey friends, Graham here. Welcome to my uh, daily teaching video. Hey, in a moment, I'm gonna jump into part two of my new course, All About Prayer. And uh, we're gonna be exploring how Jesus prayed, how we should, actually, how we should let go of all of our thoughts about prayer and come and learn of him. He says, I'm meek and lowly of heart, learn of me. So we're gonna spend some time with Jesus in the school of prayer. Today, I'm gonna be talking about the seven different types of prayer that the Bible talks about and how we integrate those into our prayer life. Um, before we do that, let me do a few housekeeping things as usual. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider hitting the subscribe uh, button down there. Uh, we also have an audio podcast. We put this out every week. If you're new to my ministry, maybe gjm.org is the best way of checking that out. Thanks to all of our ministry partners who uh, just enable me to travel and uh, do ministry missions, different things like that. Check out our ministry school, my churches in New England, and so much more. Uh, this week, um, I believe it's Friday the 3rd of March, I'm going to be in Brattleboro, Vermont, doing a service at uh, 7 p.m. this coming Sunday. That's Sunday, sorry, Let's go back. Saturday the 4th, I'm going to be having a ministry school session in Sturbridge, but we do that online. So uh, 8 a.m. on Saturday the 4th, I'll be doing a ministry mentoring session. You're very welcome to join us. Details on my website about our new ministry group. Sunday the 5th, I will be in Sturbridge Worship Center in the morning, New England Fellowship at 4 p.m. And Monday the 6th, I'll be flying to Ireland. I'll be in Dublin Landing on the morning of the 7th, uh, on the 8th, I will be in Liberty Church. I believe that's in Cookstown. It's going to be in Analong, Vibe Church in Amar, and in Belfast. So uh, looking forward to connecting with my friends in Ireland. Good, let's talk about prayer. So we began uh, in yesterday's teaching talking about how Jesus comes and Jesus said, teach us to pray. In Luke 11, it says Jesus was praying in a certain place. His disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And we began by saying that we, we all need, in effect, to pray that prayer. All of us, there has to be a time where we, we begin a journey of prayer with Jesus. And I think God is calling us, I believe he's calling the body of Christ, I believe he was calling the disciples in this season to let go of their ideas, to let go of their strategies, of their way of praying. And it is really interesting. I find it interesting as a pastor, actually, listening to people pray. And I always appreciate that. I, I appreciate the fact they'll show up and pray. I appreciate the fact that they're diligent in doing that. And yet so often, you know, in prayer, so often we're begging God to do things that he's already done. It's like we're pleading with God to do what he did 2,000 years ago. And there is a sense in which it's nice that people at least have some expectation and cry out to God. But so often our prayers are not according to knowledge. And very often we don't pray as Jesus prayed. I think possibly in the body of Christ, we put Jesus into such a special category. Well, he's the son of God. He's God in the flesh, so he can pray differently. That's not exactly how Jesus functioned. Jesus showed us a relationship with God, and then he taught us to follow him. Follow me, and I'll make you fishers men. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. So it's really important we learn to pray as he prays, prayed and prays. Good. What I'm going to do today, I want to talk about seven different types of prayer. Let me begin by reading a, a scripture in Ephesians 6.18. It says, now pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer. I believe the classic amplified says all different kinds of prayer. We should pray in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is one of those, but we should pray in the spirit through all of these different ways of praying. And there are different ways of praying. And I, I would have to say there are actually different rules, wouldn't be the word, but different principles that apply to some of these different ways of praying. And I, it's important that if we don't catch and understand some of the heart of God and the principles of the kingdom behind these different ways of praying, at times we're trying to take principles in one area and push them into another in a way that doesn't really work. 
So in a moment, I want to go through these seven uh, different areas of prayer. If I can, let me just back out for a minute and say, what is prayer? <laughs> it's actually quite a hard thing to answer. What is prayer? I think if I were to go to mo a group of people and say, what is prayer? People would say prayer is talking to God. Prayer is spending time with God. Prayer is asking God for things. Prayer is interceding, praying for others. I, I think all of those things are true. Really, prayer is communication with God, I would say. Prayer is interaction with God. <clears throat> prayer is, um, is us connecting our soul. Our spirit's always connected with God, but prayer is us actually connecting our soul with God in many different ways. And I believe these seven ways are important things for every believer. So let me go through these. Number one, this, I call it the prayer of worship. And I think actually this is the most important thing. We're going to read back in a later lesson in Luke 11, where Jesus teaches the disciples how to pray. And he begins by saying, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed, glory be to your name. And I think the first prayer we can really pray is the prayer of worship, and it's the most important one. To be really honest, if I have an hour to pray, 45 minutes of that would be in worship. Yeah. It's more important than my list. It's more important than intercession. To me, worship is more important than praying for the king, president, prime minister, dictator, whatever that might be. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Let us offer unto God continually the sacrifice of praise, that is the fruit of lips, confessing to his name. So prayer of worship is when we connect with God in worship. Now, obviously this isn't the context to teach much on worship uh, through time constraints, but um, I would really challenge you in terms of worship. I know for a, there was a whole season of my life where I really didn't get worship, where it's as if I, I thought worship was singing songs about God or singing songs to God. And then there was another season in my life I really came alive to worship when I realized worship is all about intimacy. Worship is not just singing songs about God. It's singing songs to God. It's singing songs with God. It's loving God. Literally, the Bible, you know, takes the, the analogy of, of intimacy between a husband and wife and says that's like a type and a shadow of the relationship we're called, not physical, but the relationship we're called to with God. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And when we worship, we step into intimacy with God. When we worship, everything shifts in our life. When we worship, God doesn't get bigger, but he gets bigger in our understanding, bigger in our perception. When we worship, everything shifts and changes. So, Really encourage you to uh, develop a prayer life of worship. If you have a few minutes to do, to pray every day, it's not wrong to have just certain things that you walk through. That's not being mechanical or programmed or legalistic. It's actually really great to pray through certain things. And I would always begin with the prayer of worship. Revelation 4.11. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things by your will. They exist for your pleasure. They were created. When we were created for the pleasure of God and when we worship God, literally we step into that place of pleasure. Let me continue here. Number two, the prayer of thanksgiving. Yeah, Psalm 100 verse 4 says, We enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. The prayer of thanksgiving is when we thank God. In effect, we're coming to him and saying thank you. In the Romanian, they have a prayer, they pray mutzamesk. It's like they just spend time thanking God, thanking God. We can thank God for who he is. We thank God for what he's done. We thank God for you know, his heart towards us for what he's done for us, for who we are in him. There is a thanking God for the things he 
has done for us, past tense, for the things he's accomplished in our lives, for what he's given us. There's also a place of faith where we thank God for, by faith, for the things that we believe we have received, but we haven't yet seen come to fruition. We haven't yet seen fully accomplished. So I can be thanking the Lord that I have a a nice Bible, but I can also be thanking him for that Bible I've prayed for, I believe I've got by faith and I haven't yet received. And faith says thank you before it even sees anything. Um, Prayer number three, and I'll be talking more about this one in greater depth as we go through this series, the prayer of faith. James 5, 13 um, talks about the prayer of faith will save the sick, the Lord will raise him up. And uh, the prayer of faith is when we come to God based on his promises, we pray, we believe, we receive. Kenneth Hagin was a great teaching on this one. You know, Mark chapter 11 is the classic teaching of the prayer of faith where Jesus curses a fig tree and it dies. And then he says, forget fig trees. If you'll have faith, you'll speak to a mountain and tell it to be removed and cast into the sea and it will obey you. Really important teaching. Prayer number four is the prayer of intercession. Now, intercession is when we stand in the gap, as it were, between God and somebody else. At times, there are situations where somebody is not praying for themselves or somebody's not in a place to pray for themselves. You know, in a prayer of intercession, we pray for the nation. We pray for, you know, the sick, the lost. We pray for other people. And intercession has very little to do with Satan or the enemy. It's to do with the promises of God and the gap between where somebody is and where the Lord wants them to be. You know, what what it's easy to do as Christians is to point out the gap, is to look at somebody and go, oh, there's a gap in their life. That doesn't actually take a lot of discernment. What God is looking for is people who'll stand in the gap. You know, in Daniel chapter 9, Daniel began reading the scroll of Jeremiah the prophet And uh, he began reading from Isaiah and Jeremiah that the people of Israel would be held captive in Babylon for 70 years. And Daniel does the maths and says, hallelujah, 70 years is up. But Daniel doesn't then go, great, I'll just pack my bag and wait for the release to come. He begins praying and he begins interceding for Israel. Now, it's important we don't take on an, an old covenant uh, understanding of intercession. Jesus is the high priest of our intercession, but we are called to pray for others. So prayer of intercession. Uh, Prayer number five is corporate prayer. You know, in Acts 13, it talks about the church gathering for corporate prayer. You know, something here, like in Sturbridge, in my own home church, you will do twice a week where we meet and we gather and we pray together. And there's a different dynamic that happens when we pray together as a gathered group of people. There is power in corporate prayer, really important truth there. Um, Number six, there are prayers of consecration. Prayers, there's a time where we should come to God and say, Lord, I'm not sure what your will is, but I lay my will down before your will. I surrender my will. Lord, I say yes to whatever you want me to do. You know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus uh, prayed and he said, not my will, but your will be done. There are times when it would be wrong for us to come and pray, Lord, whatever you will, when he's already told us his will. Don't ever come to God and pray, Lord, do you want me to commit adultery? Do you want me to rob a bank or, you know, punch somebody in the face? That's a dumb prayer to pray. You don't need to pray that prayer. Read your Bible and you'll find out God's will concerning those matters. There are other times we... We don't know God's will. We're not sure of God's will in a particular manner. And at times we can actually block off God's will by our intransigence, our unwillingness to go to a place to do something. So there's something powerful about coming and consecrating ourselves to him, prayers of consecration. And lastly, uh, number seven, I talk about prayer, praying in the spirit. Romans 8, 26. So sometimes we don't know what to pray for at any given time. It says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes through us through wordless groans. He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because of the Spirit. And Holy Spirit knows the perfect will of God. There is a praying in the Spirit that 
I believe at times praying in other tongues is praying in the Spirit, but you can also pray in the Spirit in English or French or whatever your native tongue would be at times. Praying in the Spirit is praying a Spirit-inspired prayer where the Spirit is praying through us. And God knows his will and at times he wants to pray and as it were bypass our mind. So seven different types of prayer. Let me go over those again. Um, I'll have notes available for these. The prayer of worship, number one. Number two, prayer of thanksgiving. Number three, prayer of faith. Number four, prayer of intercession. Number five, corporate prayer. Number six, prayers of consecration. Number seven, praying in the spirit. Let me just finish with this. I know that's a little long and maybe boring today, but uh, at times you don't even know the right prayer to pray, the right one of those prayers to pray. I love what James says in James chapter 1. He says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into temptations, testings, trials, troubles, difficulties. And then he says this, when you're, when you're in a situation, don't ask God for the way out. What he says rather is ask God for wisdom. And I believe whenever we're in a situation, we should even be saying, Lord, before I pray, show me the right way to pray. Show me the right approach to pray. Give me the keys to pray the prayer I need to that will unlock this situation. And if we'll come with humility and ask, we shall receive in Jesus' name. Boom. Thank you for watching, guys. Again, hit that subscribe button if you've yet to do that. And I'll be putting all of these teachings out as a course with notes and audio downloads, lots of different things on my ministry school. Uh, Drop me a line if you're interested in those. Do check out all the links below on my website. And lastly, thanks again to all of our ministry partners. If you're not yet a ministry partner, please pray about becoming one. And uh, I'd love to have you on this journey of faith. I'll be back tomorrow with another video.